Virgo 3, two angels bringing protection. What's an angel? An angel is depicted as having wings and being very light and big and powerful and, and so on. And maybe that's a good depiction. But um, the idea that they take human form is useful for us to, to work out what they are. Um, everything in life, life is um, a structure of light, a configuration. That's what we are. And by light, we just mean energy. It's a metaphor in Sufism. And um, the physical body, everything physical, is simply a structure of energy. And so an angel must be a structure of energy, because everything is. And when we imagine it as having a human form, albeit with a few wings, you know, but human form mainly, a human face often, um, when we imagine that, that's just to help us, because we can't imagine what they're really like. And they have independent consciousness, no doubt, and some of them have got names. We call the archangels by particular names, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, and so on. And there are lesser angels, and, and there's this whole structure, this hierarchical structure taught in Judaism and in Christianity and in Islam too. Um, so the idea is, is very popular. It's been around for a very long time that there exists a force or a hierarchy of forces that we acknowledge as being powerful and typically light, typically good, in other words. And we call upon them. And we call upon them for protection very often. And um, when we use the form of the muse, really, we're calling upon the angel of inspiration. Now, what are they really? Well, because everything resonates with everything else in the universe, as Hermes, Hermes Trismegistus says, as above, so below, that's the principle of universal resonance, then the consciousness we have of being here on Earth is in resonance with the consciousness that the angels have in being not embodied and in being far-reaching in their awareness. We have resonance with that and that means that we can access them, um, which means that we can become them. And when we call the angels, and they must be called if they're to be invoked, put in the voice, invoked, um, then we need to actually use the voice to call them. So it's not simply enough to imagine them, we have to give voice to our call. And whether we call them by name or simply use the word angels or whatever, or we could come up with some other name, um, God bless me, God protect me, then that's calling up an angel, even though you use the word God. The angels are structures of light. It, it, it's, um, the, it's like creating a certain form of, of reality. Uh, reality is um, undecided. It's a blob of, of undifferentiated energy until somebody, including us, creates a version of it. And, that, and that's what we see, our version of what we're created out of this undifferentiated blob of energy. And an angel is a version of what we're creating. So if we want a certain quality like power or inspiration or guardianship, then that's probably the best thing to say. Uh, guardianship or protection or, or inspiration or let me know the answer to this question. Just specify what it is you're choosing to have and approach the, the angels with confidence, faith, that they, they will respond. I, I'm choosing my words carefully. I, I don't like the idea of considering the angels separate from me. I like the idea of the angels being a part of my higher self. And I can't really 
ask me to to do something for me. I, I'm just choosing myself to be a certain way. And, and when I'm calling the angels, I'm just saying, right, now I'm behaving at my highest level of consciousness. That's what it means to call the angels. Now, the calling process is described in NLP, for example, as the anchoring process. An anchor is a physical gesture of some kind. It can be spoken, it can be tactile, which triggers a body state. Many of you have heard of the experiments of the Russian scientist Pavlov, who trained dogs to salivate at the sound of a bell. And when we call the angels, we're trying to call up the body state that we associate with this word angels. So the body state of inspiration or compassion or healing or power or knowledge, whatever it is you want right now, you're not quite able to tune into. You ask yourself to get into the highest state of being that you can and access that quality. And you do that by triggering it. And the trigger can be a verbal clue. You can say, angels, be with me. And they come. If you don't call, they won't come. If you do call, they will come. And so we train ourselves to call the angels. We have to do this carefully, because if, if we call the angels and we do not get into the angelic state, then next time we do it, it won't work. We have to respect the process at the highest level. So we don't call them if we don't need them. We don't call them for a trivial purpose. We only call upon the angels to create an act of what we perceive as a miracle when we need a miracle. We don't mess about with this stuff. If you play games with any magic, and this assuredly is the highest level of magic, if you play games with any of it, if you waste it, if you trivialize it, you'll lose it. And you'll probably lose it for all time, forever. It's not a good idea to mess about with this stuff. By all means, play in the sense of creative learning, but in the sense of playing around with, messing around, calling on them and then not using them, that's, that's not to be done. That's to be avoided at all costs. Because when the time comes, and even if it only ever comes once in your life, you want to know that the angels are there. And um, if you've called them falsely in the past, you've cried wolf, they may not come. <laughs> so treat it respectfully, and, and then they'll be there.